Welcome everyone, my name is Zach, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over everything that's wrong with my Tesla Model 3. So I should start by saying that I'm generally a very critical person, and I expect a lot from a car in this price range. Now, I'm really not a Tesla or Elon Musk fanboy, but when I was searching for a new vehicle, I couldn't really find anything comparable when it came to style, performance, technology, or charging network. So in this video, I'm gonna try and be as unbiased and honest as possible about my experiences with the car and issues I've had so far. So I'm sitting in my 2019 Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor, which I've had for about 10 months now, and I've put about 11,000 miles on it. Now by now, pretty much everyone knows that Tesla has a reputation for quality control issues in their cars. I was definitely aware of this when I purchased the car, and I made sure to ask about it when I was at the showroom test driving it for the first time. The good news is that these types of issues are covered under warranty, so Tesla will fix them after you pick up your car. The bad news is that there will probably be a few issues. And for anyone that's watching this, trying to figure out how their quality control is progressing over time, this car was built in September of 2019. And since the Model 3 began production in 2017, I figured that after about two years, they would have dialed things in and worked out most of the kinks in the manufacturing process. And for the most part, I think they have, but I still discovered a few issues with my car over the past 10 months. So let's go through them. So the first thing is that there is a bit of a misalignment with the trim on the driver's side of the car. Now from the outside, I never noticed this. And really the only angle that it's noticeable from is from the side view mirror, which I look out all the time. And whenever I look at this mirror, my eyes are just immediately glued to the trim. Now I'm not sure that there's really anything that can be done about this. So I've just kind of accepted that at this point. Now I will say that this is actually the only misalignment that I found on the car. The rest of the trim and body panel gaps all look really good. And I think this is actually an area that Tesla has improved a lot in the last couple years. I haven't noticed any issues with the paint job on this car either. The only other thing I've noticed on the outside of the car is a loose seal in the rear wheel well. Say that five times fast. Rear wheel well, rear wheel well, rear wheel well, rear wheel well, rear wheel well. Rear, rear. I give up. I'm not sure if there's just a missing fastener or what, but this is something that I've been meaning to try and fix, but I just keep forgetting to do it. Now let's talk about the window seals on the doors. Tesla has a pretty interesting design for the windows where they're kind of frameless, which looks great, but results in a lot of wind noise at highway speeds. Whenever I'm on the highway, I notice a lot of wind noise coming from right here. And if you look at the installation of the sealant on the top of the windows, you'll probably understand why. None of it looks very even at all. It certainly doesn't look like that's how it's meant to be installed. Speaking of doors and windows, the Model 3 has these little speakers up here in the corner of the A pillar in the door. And after just a few days of owning this car, I started to notice a noise coming from there. Now this noise doesn't happen all the time, maybe only 25% of the time when I'm driving, and it's really not very loud, but it sounds just like a Geiger counter, which are those devices that detect radiation and make that clicky noise. That's what it sounds like, just very quiet and only sometimes. Now I've figured out that if you press very lightly on this specific spot on the bottom, it stops. So I really need to find a way to like wedge something in there and see if that'll do the trick and make this go away. And I really only ever notice this noise when I'm not listening to music. If you have music playing at almost any volume, you're not gonna hear it. And for this issue, I actually brought the car into Tesla to try and get this fixed, which was not the best experience. When I showed up for my appointment, the service rep notified me that they had to be able to witness the sound in order to try and fix it. And like I said, this only happens about 25% of the time, totally randomly. So I did about four laps around the block with a Tesla service rep in the car and no noise. But luckily for me, I was able to talk to the mechanic and because I was able to pinpoint exactly where the noise was coming from by showing him where I could press and it would stop, they agreed to bring the car in and try and fix it. But unfortunately the noise came back about a week later and we're back to square one. And I haven't bothered trying to go back and get it fixed again. Now next let's talk about the sound system in the Model 3. And for the most part, I think it sounds really good. It's got very rich bass. The sound is super clean, even at high volumes. But my one complaint is that in the front row of speakers up on the dash, in a few very specific songs with a very specific frequency, there is just this awful buzzing noise and it drives me insane. Guess I'll never be able to listen to those songs again. So those are all of the issues that I have found in my Tesla Model 3 over the past 10 months. Are any of them significant? No. Would you find these types of issues on a similarly priced luxury vehicle? Maybe. I actually had an Audi A4 before this vehicle and I can tell you that the panel gaps on that car were 
actually worse than on this Tesla. And there was actually a rattle from one of the front door speakers that was worse than any of the noises in here. It seems that because Tesla has a reputation for quality issues, people are even more critical and hold Tesla to a higher standard than other cars. And this video was meant to highlight everything I've noticed while being super critical. Should this deter you from buying a Tesla in the most unbiased way possible? I don't think so. Sure, these things are annoying on a $50,000 car. Totally agreed. But there are not many other cars in this price range that have everything to offer that the Model 3 does. So it's really a trade that every person needs to make for themselves. And what's more important to you specifically? I accepted the fact that I would inevitably have some of these issues when I bought this car. But to me, the giggle factor when I step on it is worth way more than having to turn up the music to drown out a tiny little rattle that happens once in a while. But with that said, that's all for today. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you've had similar issues with your own Tesla or your non-Tesla. Regardless, thanks for watching. Consider hitting the like button or subscribing if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about living with an electric vehicle.